Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's Kai and today I have for you this fun jellyfish inspired set. I will be using some PR from Sweetie Nail Supply for this design. So they sent me the entire Juicy Pop collection. The collection itself consists of two different sets of six inks. So there is the Juicy Neon set and the Topaz set both of which are really bright, fun colors that are perfect for summer, even for some darker fall designs with the Topaz set. I love that Sweetie Nail Supply does a really good job of always packaging their products really carefully. Mine, at least, have always come bubble wrapped to make sure that all of my products arrive safely, no breaking or anything, especially since these bottles here are glass. So I have all six of the inks here. I actually have not used inks a ton. The only other experience I have with inks are the doughy marbly collection, which is just a white and the diluter liquid. So I'm really excited to try these out. Here are all of the colors. Again, very vivid, bright colors. They do have other collections, other sets that are more muted. I actually think this is one of the first that is more on the bright side for the Favori. So yeah, super excited to try these out. Each one comes in its own little box. They do need mixed. So from my understanding, these are what's called water inks. So they do have pigments in them that are going to settle the longer that you leave them sitting out. So you do have to give all of them a very good shake right when you get them and right before you use them for the best results. I will go through and swatch everything, but these are the topaz colors very like gemstone themed jewel tones and then this is the neon collection very bright fun i really like the pink pink is probably my favorite so as typical with korean japanese gel brands they come with their own special packaging this one is a cute little like envelope do you all say envelope or envelope i feel like it depends on the mood i'm in but this one comes in a little envelope um, that you can put all of the inks in. Inside is a swatch card. These are kind of interesting to swatch because they aren't like typical polishes. So you can swatch them right on the paper and they'll dry down. I definitely noticed that some colors were slightly more pigmented than that others, meaning that with some you are probably going to want to add on more of the ink to get more of a concentrated color. So I did two passes for those colors that were a little bit more pigmented. And I think it has to do with if there is any sort of like white pigment in there to boost that color. So that very first swatch I did, I think was a bit more of a pastel. And so it had some white to really give that color um, some, some body. And then these other colors here are more of a uh, transparent, pigment if that makes sense like a transparent ink and so some of them you just need two coats a little bit more layering of those inks but all of them worked pretty much about the same in terms of actually using them on a nail and their consistency when painting with them this blue is really pretty i love the neon collection probably the most I like the Topaz collection for sort of like darker, more jewel toned looks, um, but I do really like these brights from the neon set. They're just so fun and summery and I think they'll actually work really well when it comes to like mixing your inks into a 3D clay gel. That's something that I've been wanting to try out a little bit more of. I did do some of that in a recent tutorial on 3D flowers. I used my white doughy ink to make my 3D clear gel into um, a white gel and it worked wonders so I'm excited to try that out with these two. I'm also really excited to try out the new May Mode inks that are available on Sweetie Nail Supply. Those are supposed to be like true alcohol inks and so they do perform a little bit differently. I did order a black and white so I will be reviewing some of those in the future. The footage you're about to see is actually me going in and playing with the inks after I had already done the full set of nails because I made a crucial error when I had done the first design, the original design. 
I forgot that when you're blending together alcohol inks, any sort of like these water inks, you don't use alcohol to blend them, you use acetone. Using alcohol is not going to give you as much movement, it's not going to make those inks budge very much. It can wipe away the inks, but it's not going to give you that nice blend. So I went back after I did the design and I, I played around just a little bit with a matte topped nail tip here just to see how these inks really blend out and blend together. And so I started with four of the colors and I quickly realized that the more colors you do, it's very easy to muddy up your design if you're going to blend them together with acetone. My recommendation, at least when you are getting started with alcohol inks, with art inks, is to minimize the amount of colors you're blending together and minimize the amount of blending that you actually do. You can see here that when I am trying to blend these together, for one, I think I'm using way too much acetone and so it's really pulling the color away from the nail and it's less blending them together. I would definitely not use that much acetone. You really don't need as much as was on my brush at this point. And again, maybe limit the colors that you're blending together to start with until you get a feel for how they work together. Otherwise you get kind of a muddy, a muddy mess. The good news is you can just wipe it away with more acetone if you don't like what you have done. So here I decided to try just a two color blend. Again, get used to this process and really see how these work. So I went in with this blue. This is the aquamarine blue in the neon collection. And I am laying that on the nail, giving it a good amount of time to sit and dry. And then I'm going in with the neon pink and just laying that right next to the blue. Now you can overlay the colors like I do here in the middle and just get like a really cool looking blend that way. You honestly, and you'll see this when I do the actual design, you don't need to blend the colors together using acetone. It's not necessary to get some really cool looking patterns, but it is an option. So if you're looking for that like marbled nail look with really thin veins of color, you will probably need to go in with a blending liquid of some sort and move those pigments around, but you don't have to to achieve some really cool looks. I do know the Favori has its own blending liquid and that's available on the site. It might work a little bit better than the acetone. I was noticing, as you can see here, that the acetone does blend it really well, but it also tends to pick up a lot of the color off the nail. You can always add more color on, which is what I do here, but I would be interested in trying the actual blending liquid from the Favori. I'm not sure exactly what's in it 100%, but it is on the Sweetie Nail Supply website if that's something that you want to pick up as well. I do have a discount code for you all. It is get pressed for 10% off the website. I do get commission from that code, so I really appreciate everyone who uses it. Sweetie Nail Supply did send me the products for this video, but I'm not being paid to promote them in any way. They just wanted me to do a review, a showcase, and I appreciate that they've always encouraged me to talk about these products in a very truthful manner, give you best use scenarios because not every product is going to work with every design and they understand that. And so I appreciate that I get to try these out and show you all how products will work best for you. And then you can make the decision on whether or not you would like to purchase them. So I'm starting with my prepped a prey tips and then I'm using the gel monster black polish. This is GMC 63. I recently tried this out and it is a super great one coat black gel polish. I am a firm believer that a white and a black, if they're meant to be cream polishes, should be one coat. The really nice thing about gel monster, it's Zillow Boo's brand or Zillow Boo, I think. Um, is that they are HEMA free, 13 free. So if you are somebody who has an allergy, you can use it. And as you can see here, it's one and done. One coat gives you a perfectly smooth finish. So I am really excited to try out more of the Gel Monster line. I unfortunately do not have a coat with Zillabue. I would love to, absolutely. 
but there are bunches that you can find online. A lot of people have Zillabu codes where you can save, and so I'd highly recommend this for a one coat plaque. If you're somebody who really likes Sweetie Nail Supply though, I did recently try out the Vanta Black from Divock. Divock is honestly becoming one of my favorite brands. They are also HEMA free, HEMA free, and I think 13 free. And their Vanta Black and Vanta White are also one coat whites and blacks. So depending on which store you prefer buying from or what you have available to you, Gel Monsta or Divock for really good one coat black and white polishes. So once I have my nails all base coated, I'm just going to wipe off the tacky layer with some rubbing alcohol. Um, you can mattify the surface to get an even easier application of an alcohol ink, an art ink. Um, I find that just wiping off the tacky layer works well enough for me for this method here where I'm not really blending them too much with acetone, so I don't bother applying a matte top coat, but you can. Um, so here's me failing and thinking for some reason that I could blend these with alcohol. Does not work like that. You definitely need to blend them with acetone, though the alcohol will go ahead and take off the liquid well enough. I had a lot of trial and error with this set, I know jellyfish designs are really trending right now, and I love that because I love sea life. I used to want to be a marine biologist when I was younger. Didn't pan out though because I realized I also had a pretty big fear of like being out in the open water if it wasn't um, pretty shallow and like a coral reef. So that idea did not go so well, but I love the jellyfish trend and I thought that these art inks would be really good for achieving kind of that flowing liquidy look that a jellyfish has. So I'm just layering on that white. This is the doughy marbly liquid because I don't have a white ink from the Favori. And I'm kind of letting it flow in the basic jellyfish shape. I do the, the top of the jellyfish, the sort of like bell end, and then I do the tentacles. My idea here was I know that these inks are not going to show up on a black surface because they are uh, transparent, so I wanted a white background for them to show up on. However, I quickly realized that I do not want to put the inks directly onto the white marbling because I wanted to be able to blend the colors together. So I wiped off the design that I had already created. I go ahead and do another jellyfish with that white ink. I let that dry. You really wanna let some of these shapes dry before you layer on more so you're not moving around that liquid too, too much. And I actually think I liked the overall shape of this one better anyways. So it all worked out in the end. You can kind of tilt your brush here to get skinnier lines or flatten it out for a thicker line. These do dry out fairly quickly, so it's hard to take like a, a secondary brush and use that for doing art. So I would really recommend applying it at least just with the brush that comes in the bottles. And then I had an idea to really highlight some of those white sections with some white gel polish. So once all of that's dried down, I'm using my favorite leaf gel liner brush. This is the long liner, and I'm just adding in some skinnier tentacles. A lot of jellyfish, if you look at them, they have like that big mass of uh, curled tentacles, and then they have the longer, skinnier tentacles. Those ones, I think, do the most stinging, and then the others, I believe, are meant to like push the food into their mouths. So I went in and added some of those really skinny little tentacles uh, around the outside of the jellyfish just to add some dimension. And then I also highlighted some of the, the ruffles of those center tentacles with that white polish just to really make them pop. I almost think of this as underpainting. So if you have done any sort of traditional art, um, you might be familiar with underpainting. It's a method where somebody will start painting different colors or shadows to really set the tone of a piece 
maybe they're putting in the shadows of a portrait so they're just painting in black and white to start or maybe they're adding in the shadows with like a, a dark blue or green color before adding on like a skin tone on top of the portrait so here i'm really just getting the overall shape and all of these shadows because the art inks themselves are translucent so you're not really going to get shadows per se with them. You can intensify the color with extra layers, but you won't get like that um, difference in tone from dark to light. So I'm starting here by creating as much dimension there in terms of shadows as I can before then going in with the inks to add the color. I guess the best way I could describe it would be like trying to use a marker on a black piece of paper. If it's just a regular ink marker, it's not going to work because it won't show over the black. And this whole process was very, very trial and error for me. Again, this is sort of the first time I'm really using these sort of art inks extensively. I do really like the process though. I loved watercolors when I was younger and I was doing more traditional art and so this felt very reminiscent of using watercolors or gouache and so I had fun with it. There was some struggle for sure um, but it was it's always been experimenting for me and unfortunately it's got me really wanting to try out more inks so um, I have at this point purchased some of the metallic inks from Sweetie Nail Supply from the Favori because they have some really cool metallic art inks and I'm super excited to use those. They will definitely be in future videos and some future hauls. And like I said, I also want to try those May Mode alcohol inks. Um, if any of you follow the Sweetie Nail Supply Instagram, you might be familiar with Lauren or um, I think it's Inspo by Nails or Nails by Inspo, um, but she does a lot of lives for them and she is so amazing with these sort of art inks or alcohol inks. I love watching her tutorials. They're just so helpful. So I would definitely check her out on Instagram if that's a social media that you use. I will try to remember to link hers below. Um, but yeah, she does a lot of like live demonstrations for the Sweetie Nail Supply Instagram channel. For the middle finger, instead of doing another full jellyfish, I thought I would do maybe like a close up of the tentacles. And so I just go in with that overall tentacle shape, layer on some of that white. Honestly, this looks so cool just the way it is. I think this sort of medium when it comes to doing nail art is really easy to use in the sense of you can get some really dynamic shadows and some really dynamic shapes with very little effort but it is hard to master it's one of those things where it's like anybody could pick them up and use them but to really get the full effect out of these alcohol art inks you definitely need a lot of practice like Overall, I'm happy with how this set came out, but I definitely think that there are areas that I could improve upon when using these. And so I'm excited to learn more, to grow more, to try some of the different like quartz looks, some of the stone designs that are very popular, especially when it comes to Japanese nuance art designs. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to playing around with these more. This is again, that gel monster white and it is super pigmented even though it's just a regular gel color i can easily use it as like an uh, an arch gel a painting gel it's not as thick as a painting gel but it is a thicker formula i noticed that when it comes to the gel monster uh the gel monster collection so it does perfectly fine here as a painting gel and once I cured that, I decided I wanted to add just some little dots just to add an extra shape in here. I had a lot of like really flowing organic looking lines and I wanted something a little bit more um, geometric, I suppose. So I added these dots along some of those straight lines. I don't know. I like how it looks. Um, it's just a little something extra, you know? 
And here I'm going in with one of my new favorite matte top coats. This is the Zero Matte Top Coat from Diva. I really like this stuff. It's great for chrome. Nothing really seems to stick when I use it for chrome designs. And I thought it would be nice here to use then as the background for these art inks because I was going to blend them out. I didn't want them moving too much. So I did apply a matte top coat before using them. And this also took some time to get right, uh, blending these together, getting the colors how I wanted them. Here are some of the inspiration pictures for this set, for these colors. I did find them online and I did not use like an AI generator to make them, but I do believe they were AI generated. The website they came from said as much and it definitely looks very AI. I, to go off on a bit of a nerdy rant, I have conflicting emotions about AI. I think that if it's used here like I did as inspiration, it can be super helpful because I think that it's great for taking ideas that people maybe haven't thought of and presenting them to artists for them to interpret in their own ways. I know a lot of nail artists will get like mood boards from AI and I don't think there's necessarily a problem with that. I actually think that's really smart. I would love to do it more. My only reservation is I have a background in both traditional art, digital art, and photography. And so I know how much work goes into taking a really nice photograph, into editing a really nice photograph. And even if an AI is not selling someone's photograph specifically, it is being trained on their photography, on their hard work, the time they took to learn those skills, to get the framing of their shots right, to get the colors of their pictures correct. And so in some ways, AI is benefiting from other artists' work. Even if it's just an AI photograph, it's benefiting from years of experience that artists, digital, traditional, whoever have uploaded their work to the internet have put into developing their craft and then it's taking that without giving them credit. I think I would enjoy AI art a lot more if these AI databases were only based on photographs, on artwork that the artists themselves have voluntarily elected to put on the database to be learned from, if that makes any sense. It's just it does, I feel kind of bad at using it when I consider that like these images here are probably pretty close to, or at least have been trained off of somebody's real work, something that they took time to do to make, and they're not getting any credit or any sort of compensation from it. If you were to take inspo from somebody's photo, or heck, if you were to even use somebody's photograph for marketing purposes, to create a product, you would owe that person royalties, right? You would have to pay them for their expertise. And here you have people who are taking AI, creating art with it, and even going as far as to sell it as their own. And I just think I have a major problem with that. I have less of a problem with people taking inspiration from it and using it as like a springboard to create something of their own. But I think when people are selling AI art, I think that's a huge issue. I very much dislike that. And as a teacher too, um, I have seen such a huge uptick in kids basically plagiarizing on their homework, their writing assignments, using AI to write for them. And from a laziness standpoint, I get it. Look, nobody really likes writing papers. I'm an English major and I didn't even really love writing papers. The problem becomes that it's a crutch for them. They're not using it because they just don't want to write the paper. A lot of them are using it because they don't, they don't want to learn how to write properly and formally. I know that's not an easy process at all. Trust me, I completely get it. I actually was not that strong of a writer in school, but I learned and I think it's really important that people learn how to communicate, 
Reading and writing, I see, are not just skills for school, but they're life skills. I mean, even if you want to own your own business, you have to be able to sell yourself, right? To be able to promote your products and collaborate with people. So that's why I stress so much learning how to read and write without aid like AI. Again, I think there are ways that you can use AI as inspiration that are super helpful. They make things easier. I don't give a heck if you rewrite an email using AI. Like if a kid honestly emails me and I can tell he's using AI to create proper grammar or whatnot, like sure, fine. You wanna save some time by creating a an email template to your boss, asking an inquiry, you want it to sound professional and you just don't have the time to sit there and write tons of emails. I get that. I think the problem is when people are using AI as a crutch to replace their skills. They're not then developing, they're not then learning those skills, and instead they are relying on something else to do it for them. I think that's where I have a problem with AI, that and not giving artists proper credit. So yeah, um, I would love to know what you all think. Um, It's clearly a new technology that we are all having to navigate, and I'm interested in seeing where the government goes with AI and regulating it. So it will be an interesting few years coming up for sure. But let me know, what are your thoughts on AI in the comments below? And that's my rant, (laughs) I'm sorry. It's kind of long-winded. I could probably talk about that subject for hours, honestly, because it just intersects with so many of the fields I'm in. But yeah, back to the art. I have laid down all of the ink colors blending them together slightly, but trying to keep them really um, separate for the most part and just letting the liquidity of the inks do their work and blend them together naturally. Here, I'm just taking in that same gel monster white color and I am again highlighting some of those tentacles just around the edges and redoing some of those like longer straight tentacles, adding those white dots back in just to really make them pop I thought it needed just that extra bit of definition to really sell the jellyfish shape. And now I'm going back in with my matte top coat because I thought I would add a little gold chrome here. I wish I had had the metallic inks when I did this design. They arrived long after I had actually finished it. Um, because it would have made adding the metallic elements that I wanted super easy, but I had to use chrome, which is fine. I wanted to try this clear edge gel from Jello Jello, actually, that I had received recently. Not received, I bought this. <laughs> um, here is that. Here's my first opening of it. It's a really nice, thick, non-stick gel, so it's going to hold its shape very well. It's going to create texture if you use a textured brush and just give you that really nice textured chrome look. I was very pleased with it. I just dabbed a little bit on where I wanted it, cured it for only 30 seconds, and then rubbed in my Nail Bio Gold Chrome Powder. One of my favorites. I really love this stuff. It's so finely milled. Sorry, I was kind of off focus here. Um, I was not keeping track of that, and somehow I ended almost completely out of the frame, but I just dab on that gold chrome, wipe away the excess with a makeup sponge, and that step is complete. I just wanted to highlight just little teeny tiny sections of the jellyfish, so there's really not a lot of the chrome here, just enough to kind of give it a subtle glow. These little mini silicone tools here are actually from Timu, I think. Um, You should be able to find them from most online retailers, but they are super helpful for these isolated chrome looks where you just have a small area that you need to breath that chrome powder into. It really decreases fallout, I would say, because you get to target those areas more specifically. And yeah, that's what the final look is for the art portion on these nails. And I have recently been loving the dewdrop effect. I thought it would go perfectly with jellyfish themes. So I did some of that on the two nails that don't have any paint. 
I'm using my D-Gel Signature Top Coat. This is the non-wipe anti-scratch version. I really like the longevity of this polish, and so that's why I'm using it for these little dew drops because I just, I'm hoping that it will last longer. So here you can see that I'm just painting on a, a pretty thick layer of gel onto the fishing line. And then I take a little fine detailer brush and you can actually move the drops around. You can change the sizes of them to what you want them to be. Do this all before curing because once you cure that, there's no going back and changing this. So I'm just making some of those drops smaller, some of them larger, creating a variety of shapes and then giving that a flash cure. I tend to try to make one really long strand at a time and then cutting it down to whatever size it needs to be rather than like trying to add on extra dew drops at the end. I love this top coat, but I will say one thing I recently found out was you don't want to use it with a black polish because it does have a slight bit of cloudiness to it. I think it's probably because it is anti-scratch. It's just a little bit stronger. So if you're going to get the D-Gel Signature Top, just note that you'll probably want a different one for only your black polishes. Every other polish it's worked fine on, it's just black that I tend to notice that teeny tiny bit of cloudiness. Here I'm just sticking on those dew drops, that dew drop strand with that clear fix gel. And I wanted to add some little gold charms to match the gold accents on the other nails. Here I'm just adding some shells, some starfish, and some little gold caviar beads. All of that I'm just affixing with that clear fix gel. Having a potted gel like this is nice because I can just literally dip the whole charm in the potted gel and make sure it's nice and covered and then stick it onto the nail. It's not non-wipe though, so you do want to go in and top coat everything once you are done. This was a little tricky. I would say if I were to do this again in the future, I would want to put all the charms on first, top coat the nail, and then go back in with the dew drops at the very end because just getting under there was a little bit difficult, but I did with a little striper brush. And at this point, I thought I was done. So I top coated everything and I will be honest, I wasn't loving the simplicity. Um, and by simplicity, I mean, I'm a big fan now of 3D nails, of lots of texture on nails. I don't remember the last time I made a set that didn't have like some sort of 3D charms or something on them. And so I felt like it was just a little bit lacking for my personal taste. And so I did go in with the Ivy Multiliner here and I made the jellyfish a little bit more 3D by dolloping on a really thick layer of that Ivy Multiliner gel just right on top of the bell portion of the jellyfish to give it some some shape, you know, make it look like it's popping off of the nail. I do like the Ivy Multiliner for little things like this. It is thicker than I would say standard top coat, but not thick as the Jinbi Crazy Top Thick, but it's super handy because it does have that brush included. I don't have to go reaching for a separate art brush to then clean it off later. So I love this for like dew drops, for doing this sort of thing. I do go ahead and try to use it for some swirls. And I will say I would not recommend it for 3D swirls. It's just a little bit too loose. I was having trouble here keeping that shape really nice and crisp and 3D. So I did end up going in with my crazy top anyway. She is my favorite for doing 3D swirls. Absolute favorite. She's runny enough to where it will even out the 3D swirl and you won't get like any sort of weird textures, but it holds its shape enough where you can get some really nice 3D swirls, have some time to work with them before curing them. So I'm just adding swirls on those fully black nails. And then on this middle nail, I am going in with some swirls kind of all over to create 
texture. I wanted it to look um, maybe like water texture, almost like a current that was directing that tentacle. I didn't want to go exactly with the tentacle for fear of like uh, affecting the design too much. So I just did some, some swirls over the top, alternating if they started from the free edge of the nail or from the base. And this was the final look. I was a lot happier with this design. Um, definitely a fun learning process. Not my usual style. Usually I go for more subtle muted colors, but you all let me know what you think. Um, how did you like this design? How do you all like working with alcohol or inks? If you have any tips and tricks, I would love to hear them because I'm definitely going to be trying some more art with them in the future. I love hearing from you guys in the comments, so please feel free to engage with me there. I try to respond to everything. I am going back to school here though soon, so I might not be able to respond as quickly as usual, but I love hearing from you. Thank you so much to everybody who is subscribed, who watches my videos, who use my codes. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Thank you so much again for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all next time. Bye.